My friends, Donald Trump's foreign policy is based in principled realism, not endless interventionism. We have no pressing national security interest in Syria now. We fulfilled our objective. We smashed ISIS, a success that the administration shares with General Mattis. Joining me now with reaction is David Morey. He's a former DHS special advisor under the Obama administration and Ben Friedman, senior fellow at Defense Priorities. Great to have both of you here tonight. David, your old boss, uh, Barack Obama, largely won the presidency on his non-interventionist message, specifically targeted at Iraq, but in general, that America cannot overextend herself, nor should we try to remake other nations in our own image. So why do you take issue then with what Trump has done here in Syria? Well, just like President Obama wasn't exactly perfect in the withdrawal from Iraq, Afghanistan, I think this is a mistake. Uh, I, I agree with some of what you said, Laura. I disagree with some of what you said as well. I think it was a mistake because it's beyond contrarian in terms of we've already defeated ISIS. I mean, the majority of the national security community inside, outside the administration uh, don't think we've, uh, that this is a good idea to withdraw 2,000 troops from Syria, that it opens up a, a, the potential for a reflash. The general, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, obviously Secretary of Defense Mathis, I believe Ambassador Jeffries, Jeffries Special Envoy McGurk. You know, this is a little bit like declaring victory, landing on the aircraft carrier with Mission Impossible behind you, something that President George really? W. Really? Because Bush Foreign Policy thought. Magazine, whoa, 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 a second. Like, you just look a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and Ben, I want to get you into this. A couple of months ago, I was reading all the headlines this morning on the way down here, and it was foreign policy successes, the, the Trump administration, uh, you, know, mission, you know, a mission accomplished against uh, ISIS. You know, obviously, ISIS wants to try to reconstitute itself right. and here, there, and everywhere. So you're never going to, like, destroy all of ISIS. But in the area where we were focused, ISIS has been driven out. Ben, I got to read something. This is Mark Thiessen's tweet earlier today. I love this tweet. And again, Thiessen, big Bush guy, he said the following. We'll put it up on the screen. He basically said here, you know, uh, anyone who criticized Obama's irresponsible withdrawal from Iraq but defends Trump's irresponsible withdrawals from Syria and Afghanistan needs to check their hypocrisy. Your reaction there? Yeah, I think you're actually overstating Obama's anti-interventionism a little bit. He was the author of the surge in Afga Afghanistan and put ground forces in Syria. But uh, I agree with you on this. We need a definition of success or ISIS's defeat that mortals can achieve. Well, the national security experts that we're hearing so much from complaining about this have a standard of defeat for ISIS that's impossible to achieve. It's sort of like if anybody in Syria uh, thinks nicely of ISIS or says anything in their favor, we have to stay in Syria forever. So I, I think we've achieved a reasonable standard of success against ISIS. They don't have any territory anymore. They do, that, that's an uh, important thing. Uh, they don't have the allure to attract people to come, idiots from around the world, to come fight for them. Uh, their ranks are decimated. They've been mostly killed. So if that's not success, there, nothing is, and we're going to stay in Syria forever. I want to play for you, um, just so our viewers remember, what Donald Trump said he was going to do and his general approach to foreign policy. Remember, he gave his big foreign policy speech, I think it was December a year ago when he laid out his priorities, like principled realism. I'm going to play this and get your reaction. Let's watch. Our leaders engaged in nation building abroad while they failed to build up and replenish our nation at home. They undercut and shortchanged our men and women in uniform with inadequate resources, unstable funding, and unclear missions. All right, David. The that's what the president basically campaigned on. Barack Obama said something similar, but I think, look, mm -hmm. Ben's right. Realism on the ground in Afghanistan kicked in, couldn't pull everybody out, had a mini surge in Afghanistan, reluctantly deployed troops in Syria. He didn't want to do it right. at all. He had the red line. Right. He, uh, Trump smashed him back on the red line of you know, chemical weapons used. But look, Donald Trump did respond to these chemical attacks. He got criticism from uh, a lot of folks when he did, actually, on the right. non-interventionist right, but he did respond. It's not like right. Donald Trump has done nothing in, in Syria. So to hear all these Democrats today say, well, Donald Trump just had a herky-jerk foreign policy, 
I think it's been fairly consistent. We said when we get it done, we're going we're gonna to begin to draw down troops because we have a lot of stuff to do on the home front that has frankly not been done, not been paid for, and we've got to take care of business at home. I think he's just fulfilling his promise. Well, let me say this. I think, and Ben might concede this point in what he wrote earlier today, I, I, you know, what gets people worried is the lack of a national security decision-making process. I think President Trump made this decision talking to President Erdogan on the phone. So there's no strategy communication scenario planning that feels like it's in action. Number two, it's bigger than Syria. Just like Afghanistan, 9-11 uh, was bigger than Afghanistan. What could this incubate? What are the ramifications for Israel, Iran? There are a lot of questions there. Listen, $3 trillion of spending on Iraq and Afghanistan is in some ways hard to defend from any perspective, from any party. So I, I think the issue is, you know, what do these 2,000 troops represent into the potential of a reflash and the potential of a danger to the but United States of America? Ben, I, I, I got, guys, there is always a potential for reflash. That's why going into these very difficult, tumultuous places, with tribal factions, you know, yeah, ISIS is a Sunni terror group, the Hezbollah is Iranian-backed, then you get the Alawites with uh, Bashar al-Assad, you got the Christian community that was protected by Assad and has been destroyed and brutalized and persecuted uh, under, under ISIS and what's happened. So th this is a complex web of, of relationships and detail. And I think, again, the idea that there's a great constituency, Ben, for a, a, a return to Bush-style interventionism, where we, we establish the, uh, these beachheads and never leave, I, don't, I just don't think that the American people are for it. And at some point, it's going to affect Democrats and Republicans really badly, because you're going to really get someone uh, in the White House who really doesn't want to do any foreign policy of this nature at all, and that will hurt us. It's a beltway consensus. Uh, I agree with you. The American people, I think, polls show are not for endless occupational wars. It continues to stun me the extent to which people in this town look at the last 15 years of American foreign policy in the Middle East and say, that went well. I think we should have another occupational war using U.S. military forces to manage the sectarian civil war for an indefinite period in service of some management goal. It, it really uh, continues to blow me away that that's the sort of default foreign policy uh, thinking around here. Oh, and there's been a lot of changes in, the, in thinking. It's, there's some evolution. And look, I don't mind when people evolve in their thinking. I was very rah-rah in the war in Iraq. I love, my, I love our troops. Went over there, did a show there uh, for a week. But after a while, it became fairly obvious to me it was a huge mistake and many others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. people evolve, they change. But Rachel Maddow, who I think, look, she does a good job over there at MSNBC, but it's kind of confusing where she's come down on this issue. Let's hear about what she said last night. Let's watch. The way that U.S. troops are fighting ISIS in Syria is in partnership with the Kurds in right. partnership with Kurdish fighters who are believed by the U.S. military to be the most effective anti-ISIS force on the ground. Um, and if the U.S. is now going to leave, what you're hearing, what you just described, sure. is essentially devastation for the Kurds. But then in an interview she did uh, on a, for a book, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald tweeted this out earlier, uh, an expert, excerpt from this uh, book called Drift. She said, in part, we don't need a radical new vision of post-Cold War American power. We just need a small c conservative return to our constitutional roots, a course correction, advocating against uh, this almost colonial approach to foreign policy. I think the left is really kind of caught in between, uh, you know, two different countervailing positions here, David. And I think it's hard to square the, square the, uh, the circle. Well, I think that foreign policy needs to be driven from the center. We might even agree on that. You know, you talked about at the beginning entangling alliances. I agree we're against that. It doesn't mean we're against all alliances. Uh, you know, we can't take our allies and make them adversaries. And I'm not sure it's a great idea to take our autocrats and make them allies. You know, I, I think, you know, that's the challenge that we have today. I think this is too much of a dangerous world to be in well, it wait a alone. second. Yeah, okay, Dave, but we, we're dealing with China, right? Chi China, China, we trade with China, we do technology transfers with China. We do, look at a Marxist-Leninist regime. So all these people are like, oh, we can't deal with bad actors. We're dealing with bad actors morning, noon, and night with China. CEOs, right, Hollywood, uh, the media, universities. So, I mean, we got a, we got a wild deal. That, real quick, because we're out of time. Uh, sec def, uh, any, any picks? Ben, real quick. I can't think of anyone who would take the job who I could recommend for it. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, David, anyone? B Bill Cohen. He's not going to take the job either, so that's not helpful. Oh, okay. Well, mine is Jim Webb. All right, mine's Jim oh, Webb. Oh, yeah, that's good. I, I like that. Or not. I think it'd be a great choice, former yeah, uh, agree. Uh, Secretary agree. of the Navy and form, former Assistant uh, Secretary of Defense. Uh, yeah, he's my pick. He would be phenomenal. All right, guys, thanks so much.